What is up, Iwu crew? In one of our earlier videos, we covered the tragedy of John Allen Chow, a missionary who broke numerous laws to travel to a restricted island off the coast of India to make contact with a tribe known as the Sentinelese, who eventually killed him and buried him on their island. Today, we are talking about a few other infamous incidents when uncontacted tribes met people from the outside world. The Sentinelese are just one tribe of a few who live on the outskirts of society, isolated for centuries or even millennia in the most remote parts of the planet, without any real contact with the world around them in almost complete seclusion. In 2021, there are believed to be about a hundred different uncontacted tribes living throughout the world. Almost all knowledge about these elusive people either comes from aerial footage or unfortunate disastrous encounters. Often, when helicopters, planes, and drones are sent into the remote areas where these people live, they can be witnessed looking on with wonder and shock at the sight of modern technology. But more often than not, the tribes respond with fear and anger, shooting arrows up into the sky in the hopes of bringing down the foreign objects flying overhead. Very few tribes have had no real interaction with the outside world at all. In most cases, what we consider to be uncontacted tribes have, in truth, had at least some sort of interaction with people from the outside world, but usually these incidents were negative and violent, which could explain why these tribes retreated into the wilderness after and still refuse to make contact to this day. The Sentinelese have been dubbed the world's most hostile uncontacted tribe for a good reason. Over a century before John Allen Chow made his ill-fated meeting with the Sentinelese, British imperialists first made ill-fated contact with the tribe. In the 1880s, the British decided to establish a relationship with the tribe who they had witnessed hunting on the North Sentinel Island off the coast of India. The tribe had actually been first discovered over a hundred years prior in 1771, when the East India Company first saw lights along the shoreline. But for years following, any interaction with the tribe proved to be dangerous. However, in 1880, a British naval officer named Maurice Vidal Portman was undeterred and determined to meet the Sentinelese. At this time, the British had experience making contact with various tribes that had previously not been exposed to the outside world. It was through these experiences that they had created an unconventional protocol that they believed led to successful interactions. When the uncontacted tribes were unfriendly, the British would kidnap one of their members. They would then treat the kidnapped person well, feeding them and caring for any medical aid they required before giving them gifts and returning them back to the tribe. Though it seems counterproductive, the British intended that their kind treatment of the person would be their entrance into meeting more of the tribe members and eventually establishing good relationships. It was exactly this protocol that Portman decided to use on the Sentinelese, as they had previously been hostile and wary when the British approached. At first, his attempted kidnappings did not go as planned because the Sentinelese fled in fear when they saw strangers on their island. However, an elderly couple and some children were unable to escape, and Portman had his men kidnap them. Though their intention may have been to treat the tribe's people well, the two elderly people soon became sick after being in contact with the British. Without knowing it, the British had exposed the Sentinelese couple to diseases that they had no immunity for. After only a few days, the elderly couple died. Despite this, the British still tried to convince the children that they were friendly and plied them with gifts before returning them home alone. Once the tribe realized that two of its members had died while with the British, they were extremely aggressive and refused any other interaction. 
Some researchers have theorized that it was this disastrous initial contact that directly led to the Sentinelese's overly hostile reactions to anyone who has set foot on their island since. Other attempts to meet the Sentinelese were made, but none have ended well. In 1896, a convict managed to create a makeshift raft and escape from a penal colony located on Great Andaman Island. In his attempts to get away, his raft drifted onto the Sentinelese Island. Soon after, a search party was sent out and they discovered the convict's body on the beach, his throat cut and body covered in several wounds from arrows. Only three years later, Richard Karnak Temple, the chief commissioner of the Andamand Islands, reported that he had gone to the Sentinelese Island to capture any other fugitives who had also escaped from the penal colony and wound up on the island. But when he did, Temple said that he only found their bodies, as all had been killed by the tribe. Temple described the Sentinelese as a tribe which slays every stranger, however inoffensive, on sight, resulting in them being left relatively alone for another hundred years. In 1974, National Geographic became interested in the Sentinelese and went to the island to film a documentary. As soon as their boat approached, they were met with a hail of arrows. Luckily for the crew, the arrows missed them and they continued to land on the shore. Attempting something similar to the British, they left a variety of gifts to show that they were friendly. Unconvinced, the Sentinelese shot more arrows and laughed when one of the arrows struck the documentary director in the thigh. The director survived the wound, but the National Geographic crew fled from the island. After this incident, no more formal attempts to contact the Sentinelese were ever made. Poachers in 2006 made international headlines when they snuck onto the North Sentinelese Island. They had gone to the shore in the middle of the night to illegally hunt mud crabs, but while there, they decided to drink heavily and eventually fall asleep. The next morning, the Sentinelese killed the intruders. The Sentinelese aren't the only isolated tribe who have deadly reputations when it comes to making contact with the outside world. In 2020, 56-year-old Riali Francescato, a renowned Amazon tribe's expert and member of the foundation Funai, which works to protect the land of remote tribes, saw evidence of an uncontacted tribe known as the isolated group of Catario in Serengueras in the north of Brazil. Regarded as the most experienced defender of Amazonian uncontacted tribes, Rieli quickly organized a team that included police officers to follow the Catario deeper into the Amazonian forest. For three decades, Rieli worked with the Brazilian government, collecting data on uncontacted tribes and campaigning for their territory and ways of life to be left undisturbed. Rieli's group chased the Catario in an effort to keep them from accidentally crossing over land that belongs to local farmers, which could possibly result in an altercation. Through the forest, they followed the tribe's footprints until they came to the edge of a river. Not knowing exactly where the tribe went, Rieli decided to go ahead alone and leave the rest of his group waiting behind. Though he was by himself, the tribe mistook Rieli as an intruder on their territory and fired arrows at him. Because he was so close, Rieli was struck directly in the chest. A police officer with him reported that he cried out, pulled the arrow from his chest, ran 50 meters back to the group, and collapsed lifeless. The arrow likely pierced his heart. Previously, when the tribe was observed, they were said to be peaceful. The part of the tribe that shot at Rieli was believed to have been sent out by the other members as a war group because of an unknown incident that antagonized them. The photographer with Rieli later commented that he thought it looked like the armed tribe members were looking for revenge when they killed the activist. 
Brazil has the country with the highest concentrations of uncontacted people, with somewhere between 77 and 84 different tribes living within the dense Amazon forest, has seen more violent clashes between these tribes and the outside world than anywhere else. But it isn't always the tribes who are the ones doing the killing. Just like the Catario, most of the tribes in Brazil live in protected reserves where the land has been claimed for indigenous people. But logging, cattle farming, the rubber trade, drug smuggling, and even wildfires have brought calamity to some of the uncontacted tribes in these areas. On occasion, the isolated tribes have violent encounters with their neighbors who they usually avoid, such as loggers and farmers, but recently, they have seen their territory encroached upon. Many of these tragedies have been disastrous, but because the tribes are so hidden and isolated from the rest of the world, what exactly happened to them is often unknown. One survivor of a mysterious tragedy is a lone man known only as the Man of the Hole. No one knows his real name, his language, or what tribe he had belonged to. This man, living completely alone in the rainforest of Brazil, is the last of his tribe. The man of the hole had once lived among an isolated tribe that refused contact with the outside world, until something terrible happened that resulted in the death of every member of his tribe except for him. It is believed that his entire tribe may have been massacred following an altercation with nearby cattle farmers leaving the man of the hole completely on his own. Today, he still refuses to make any contact with anyone, choosing to live by himself in a grass reed hut. To protect him, the Funai have built a reserve around the area where he lives, a territory that is surrounded by cattle ranchers, some of whom could possibly have been the ones to kill his tribe. In addition to tragedies like this, other factors, such as disease, also pose just as much of a threat to isolated tribes. On occasion, uncontacted tribes decide to voluntarily explore the outside world, which is exactly what happened in 2014. In the state of Acre, Brazil, a few members of a long-isolated Amazonian tribe known as the Shinani came out of the forest to raid the settled village of another nearby tribe in order to steal food and tools. While there, they met members of Funai and stayed for a total of three weeks where they met with the researchers. During their contact, several of the tribe's people started to become sick, coughing and appearing pale. The researchers realized that they had probably exposed them to influenza from their close encounters an illness which the tribe would have no previous immunity to and could prove to be deadly. The sick tribe's members were given flu immunizations and though this likely saved their lives, disaster struck soon after. Fearing their recent illness, the members of the Shinane tribe fled the village to return to their own community in the forest while they were still contagious carriers for the potentially deadly flu there is a good chance that they accidentally spread the flu to the rest of their tribe, potentially wiping out all of them with one illness, especially as there is a chance that they also picked up malaria while staying with the researchers, which they could have infected their whole tribe with as well. Because of their isolated nature, it isn't clear how the tribe fared against the potential exposure to the diseases. In other parts of Brazil, entire uncontacted tribes have vanished due to disease. Today, people are understandably fascinated by the existence of uncontacted tribes. One tribe in particular has garnered a lot of attention in recent years. The Jarwas tribe live on the Andaman Islands in India, near the Sentinelese. But unlike the reclusive and aggressive tribe, the Jarwas have been more welcoming to outsiders. Though contact is limited, as they are still living outside the modern world, the Jarwas have been targeted by tourists and guides. Though illegal under Indian law, private companies offer the rare opportunity for sightseers to catch a glimpse of an uncontacted tribe's daily lives. 
It's been alleged that over 500 tourists a day could be secretly taken to gawk at and take pictures of the Jarwas, who appear to be unbothered by the attention. Another interesting uncontacted tribe is the Korowai. Reportedly, these people live in trees and have developed slightly splayed feet to help them climb. Discovered in the 1970s, this Papua New Guinea tribe is estimated to have up to 4,000 members. Their belief system includes a concept called Kakra, which they believe are witches who take over men's body. However, in the eyes of the Korowai people, the only way to get rid of these evil entities is to kill and cannibalize the unfortunate man. One journalist who actually asked the tribe about this alleged practice recalled, I ask Boas whether the Korowai eat people for any other reason or eat the bodies of enemies they've killed in battle. Of course not, he replies, giving me a funny look. We don't eat humans, we only eat Kakara. In 2017, yet another uncontacted tribe from Brazil came into the spotlight, but the reasons were anything but positive. A group of miners who had just completed an illegal job in the Amazon were overheard bragging in a bar about an atrocious act of violence they had committed against a group of uncontacted people. An unidentified source had listened in horror as the group of miners raucously recounted their gruesome and heartless crime, and this source decided to record the conversation and alert authorities. The gold miners said they overpowered 10 tribe members, stole their tools and jewelry, and brutally killed them, cutting their bodies to prevent them from floating and dropping them into a river. This type of tragedy is becoming a real threat to these isolated tribes. As the world continues to develop and seek out resources, hungry eyes often look to the untouched land these people have called home for generations. Reportedly, the Peruvian government denied the existence of uncontacted people for some time, and their decision to turn a blind eye led to major oil and gas operations being allowed to operate on the reserves specially set aside for the tribes. Anthropologists emphasize that fear of the unknown often plays the biggest role in these groups' choice to remain isolated, and that when these professionals do get the chance to sit down and interview people who choose to finally make contact with the outside world, they often admit that they had long considered doing so, but had simply been too scared to go through with it. Nowadays, experts who study these people and fight to preserve their way of life are attempting to protect the tribes from external threats, like logging and narco-trafficking that could end in their extinction without encroaching on their daily lives. Even though we may know where many of the uncontacted tribes are, we really have no idea just how many people make up the remote tribes, the type of lives they have, or just how isolated they truly are. In the end, one thing is for certain, the people who choose to live away from the outside world should be left alone, as violating their isolation just for curiosity usually has disastrous consequences.